Hi, this is Dominic from Paphos Life, and in today's film we're travelling from Neon Mall in Paphos, where the new Little is coming, on the 25th, to St George's Beach. So here's the map, and there's the route we're going to go straight down to the stadium roundabout, then turn to Kennedy Square, through Old Town, and then head towards Cloaca, and we're taking an unusual route down towards uh, the King Evelfon Hotel, and from there we're going up to St George's Beach itself. We'll have a drive around the hotel too. Yeah, as I said, uh, the new Little here is going to be opening on the 25th of this month. It was announced yesterday. And that's where we start. It will be interesting to see how bus much busy this car park is after it opens and I should point out that, that there is also an underground car park here and if you follow the road uh, from where we just come uh, it leads to another car park round back so don't all try and cram yourself into the car park at the front but we're going to be going down the main road to the stadium roundabout And remember, if you like our content, please do subscribe to our YouTube channel as it really does help YouTube promote us. And if you want to help us financially, then go to our pathoslife.com slash coffee page and you can either send us coffee or click on one of the affiliate links. And of course, uh, Super Home Store, which is in Neon Mall, used to be opposite the stadium. I'm not sure what uh, their old premises is going to become, but presumably it will become a department store of some description. And there's the stadium on the right. There's a the roundabout with the fountains going in full swing. It's interesting actually with the hosepipe band. I was wondering if the, fan, uh, the fountains were going to get curtailed, but they're still going strong at the moment. Now we're coming up to, uh, I think this is the B6 still, this road. It goes all the way up to Kennedy Square though. And on the left soon, We'll be passing uh, the main police station in Paphos. So if you ever need to know where that is, there's your answer. And also uh, there's a fire station there. I think that's a turning for the police station. Which is just there on the left. And that's the fire station why there's a box junction outside it so whatever you do if there's a queue of traffic keep that bit clear now this road up here is notorious for delays just because there's so many junctions in a short space of time I mean if you go left there you're heading down into Universal and if you go right here you're going up to the retail and courts area and there's the uh, Museum of Ancient Paphos, I suppose you have to call it now, because they're building a more modern museum further up the road by Kennedy Square. But the existing museum's on the right. And a lot of the archaeological sites you'll see around Paphos, the, the contents they dug up there, some of it will end there. A lot of it will go to Nicosia as well, obviously, to the main museum there. Now, this is the road that uh, the Carnival is on. It's renovated a couple of years ago now. And the 
bollards have been changed to, to match the ones they've got a cobble based strip so whoever makes them has uh, got a good thing going obviously I'm sure there used to be silver metallic ones here saying that they just changed the weird round ones so. anyway on the left there's a new water feature that's being built not yet finished but I'm keeping my eye on it because I want to see what it'll look like when it's finished and we're now approaching October 28th square on the left and the town hall and the very nice looking building past that uh, monument tower is on the left is a uh, a library believe it or not and on the right is the old police station which is being renovated to a new modern museum which I featured in a previous I think I just drove almost for a red light but not quite yeah I, I did a drone flight around that, that building work not long ago now we're going down into Old Town on the left you've got uh, the Ivis Maliotu Park which was renovated and now looks absolutely stunning. It's a lovely place that is. Now we're coming up into Old Town. Here's Marks and Spencer's on the left. And the first of the cementography pieces was just on the right there. I've never been too sure about that one. And on the left here, you have the bird without the statue, uh, sparrow statue. I say that because there used, to, there used to be, it's not the bird without the sparrow, what am I talking about? The girl without the sparrow, that's better. Because it used to be of a girl and a few sparrows, it was a very nice statue. And then someone came and nicked the, uh, the birds and they were replaced and they were nicked again. And then they were replaced with a pigeon, which was also nicked. Uh... Whether they were getting nicked by kids as souvenirs or someone was nicking them and melting them down for brass, I don't know. But there was a big hoo-ha when another statue went completely in the middle of Old Town. But they got the people responsible for that, I seem to recall. But the statue hasn't been replaced, unfortunately. Now, anyway, we're coming up to the mosque now on the left. And there's the Moss Car Park, and it's also a place, if you want to see the Paphos Cat Lady in action, she has a feeding station there. And you've got the main central car park on the right here. And you've got the final uh, cementography mural on the left. I think that's uh, piece number eight memory serves me right. They, they tell the uh, Cypriot folk tale, the whole thing. I've done articles on what the story is. So, Do a search on cementography, Paphos life, and you'll get all the information you need or want. Hopefully, anyway. Now, we're leaving Old Town and Mutlos, and soon we'll be heading into Cloaca. If you turn up uh, right up there, you'll end up at uh, Little and the Little Roundabout and the B7. And there's an old Turkish Cypriot grave on the right here. And beyond that, what used to be a bit of uh, wasteland has now had lots of trees planted in it and a car park built. It's worth pointing this out because every time uh, the municipality do a new piece of building work, some people will always know what about the trees. They never seem to bother looking A, if any trees have been planted on the place as they have done on the coast path or B, 
if they are doing stuff like planting trees, it turns out, yes, they are. So rather than just make knee-jerk comments, why don't you investigate what's actually happening? So back there, lots of trees planted, lovely. And now we're coming out of Paphos and to signify this monumental event, we've got one of the gateway to Paphos uh, on our right. And if you'd turn left, you'd be at uh, Clor uh, Clorica Greenpoint, which is a very good place to take your green waste and other household detritus. And now we're coming into Clorica itself. I did a recent film around here, which took me through the centre of Clorica, and I'm going to go the same route at the very start but when we get down to that little stadium, we'll be turning left. And I've never been down here before, so it was a bit of an adventure for me. There are many roads I could have taken, and luckily I picked the right one. We'll get to that in a minute. Oh, and some people occasionally ask, what equipment do you use to shoot your films? And if you look in the description, it's all listed. Now, occasionally, for some reason, there'll be a description where I've copied and pasted it from a previous video and the text might have dropped off. So if that's the case, then by all means, ask in the comments. But uh, before you ask, check in the description because it's, it's, that's where the information should be. At the moment, you're seeing a GoPro 10 in action. And from what I've read, there's not a great deal of difference between the GoPro 10, 11 and 12. They do reduce, uh, produce a new model each year. But uh, I think the biggest thing about the last GoPro was that they took off uh, GPS information. Anyway, you don't really need to know that. See, I've turned left there just before the stadium and I'm now driving through to what to me is uncharted territory. I think my stomach might be objecting to some... Uh, raw ginger I put in my morning muesli. I do have to apologise. I'm going to go back and uh, try and edit most of the squidgy sounds out. But I'm sure there will be a couple left in. Especially if they appear when I'm talking. early morning is a good time well normally it's a good time for doing these voiceovers because uh, the rest of the family is still in bed so I can do it without being interrupted so we're heading down towards the coast road now and at this point I wish I'd had the uh, 360 on the roof as well so I could have done a hybrid film because there's quite a nice view coming down here And this will lead us down onto the King Evelfon Hotel. Where we will be turning right. Unfortunately for you, I edit out all the traffic delays. I mean, <clears throat> this film was, I think it's just under 20 minutes, but before the traffic delays, it was about 25 minutes long. So. 
And that one back there was uh, probably the biggest bottleneck. So now we're on the main Paphos to Coal Bay Road, but we're not going to be, <coughs> excuse me, but we're not going to be on it for that long. And soon we'll be turning to uh, St George's Beach. I drove down there to uh, fly the drone, the new one, get some more practice with it. And I've also been experimenting with filters on it so I can fly it in the sunshine without uh, the brightness of the sun blowing out the picture. I have to say I'm being very impressed with the results of the drone. I hope you've been enjoying them too. I have to be careful though because it comes with a couple of zoom levels as well and I don't want to uh, inadvertently film something I shouldn't. This is especially true when I'm going down the seafront. But those zoom levels are uh, useful for when I'm near an archaeological site, which I can't fly over. I can instead uh, at least get a, a better view from a distance now. So we're driving up to returning for St George's Beach. On the left here is one of those new coffee chains that popped up. That one's in a double-decker bus. It's not something you say every day, is it? Here we turn. And there's St George's Hotel. And we're going to go around the long way just so you can see the chapel. Yeah, we get his name from. Well, St George is very big in Cyprus. Turn right into the hotel. I remember coming here on Green Monday and the beach was absolutely rammed solid. I published a film of it. It's worth having a look just to see the difference. And it was ram solid with people in cars having barbecues. It's even like an open air DJ and everything there. And it wasn't just here, it was all up and down the coast. We turn left down towards the hotel beach area. And that will just about wrap it up. I did go for a wander here and take some pictures for Calamera shots. But, uh, it's a very nice ground as well. And that's all part of the Cloaca, uh, Cloaca Coast Path as well. Anyway, I do hope you've enjoyed that somewhat unusual route. And I will say thank you for watching. And I will see you in the next film, preferably without any ginger in me. Cheers.